Why do you think you're clearer on the son you want to raise than the man you would be? <clears throat> Listen, it's the message right here. Black boy, tell me how you really feel. Cause I just want to build with you. Black girl, tell me how you really feel. I want to keep it real with you. I want to live better, eat better. I want to love better, sleep better. Yeah, I want to feel so aligned. Sublime. I think we are a... an over-sexual culture. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think you can argue particularly our women. And the only reason I say that, I have a, a friend of mine, he, uh, he runs an Instagram page with 640,000 women. Yeah. I'm not a part of that group. <laughs> <laughs> no, but what he was telling me was like, he was like, yo, like when I post some, you know, a regular post, it gets engagement. When I post a business post, it gets engagement. A little engagement. When I post something about sex, mm -hmm. he said the comments, the likes, like it's crazy. Mm -hmm. We're we're super sexually curious, over sexually inundated. Motherfuckers are doubling down on their sex appeal because similar to what you said, subconsciously they might feel like that's the only thing or the best thing that they have to offer. Mm -hmm. um, and even to the point where, in your friend's case, she's willing to jeopardize a good man who could potentially be a good father mm -hmm. uh, for a man who just pleases her sexually. So why do you think that is? Why do you think we're so gung-ho, over-invested in sex and sexual gratification? It's better than, and I want you to speak specifically for Black women. Mm. I don't know, maybe it's the the feeling they get. Sometimes they that feeling can overpower what they want to feel outside of sex, if that makes sense. Like a woman wants to feel loved, and sometimes men don't know how to properly love them outside of being in that type of environment. Because when you're having sex, it's supposed to be passionate and it's supposed to be like you're looking in that person's eyes, all of that. And you only feel that at that moment. Right. So you get finished. Next day comes up and it's like you get that cold feeling again. So it's like we're only in that magical moment during that time. So women probably have processed of that's the only time I can feel like. I'm getting what I'm supposed to get out of that person doing sex. Could be. I don't know. Me personally, like, I'm to the point I want a, a connection outside of that. Like, because if we can do that and if I can roll over whatever the next day and talk to you the next day, like, whatever, then I'm like, what are you here for? Like, you know. You wanna know my theory? What's the theory? I think one of the consequences of female empowerment, um, the sexual revolution is it's kind of minimized the importance of vetting a man based on his ability to be a potentially good father um, as like the main gatekeeper to whether or not I'm going to have sex with him. But with contraception and condoms and plan Bs and all that stuff, now it's just vetting a man for his ability to sexually please me, whatever that might be. And unfortunately, what that ends up being for an uncomfortable number of our women is things that are reminiscent of their trauma. 
Because mm. one of the things that, you know, breaks my heart when I when I think about it is like a lot of the shit that is popular now or that's celebrated now sexually by women comes from trauma. <laughs> the type of sex, the roughness and this, 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 this and that, it comes from some shit that might have happened to you when you were five. Please don't choke me. <laughs> No, no, not just no, not just the choke, but you know what I'm saying? Like, and 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 a lot of those things are being celebrated. Mm -hmm. Um, and and sometimes what separates guy A from guy B might not be something objective like performance, but it actually might be that he reminds you more of the trauma that you're familiar with. Then and, and it goes the same for not just, you know, in sex, but in partnership choice. A lot of times we just pick partners that remind us of our neighborhood or, or remind us of, of our comfort zone, mm -hmm. essentially. Um, so, like, how, how do we move forward from that? Because the other thing I've been telling women is, like, y'all have more at stake. <laughs> like your friend, for instance, like. If she keeps on fucking dude A and getting a good dick or whatever, mm -hmm. she's going to have a good dick baby who's going to have a low IQ and a, a dad who's not around. And that's the best, you know, because ultimately, like I say, I say this to women all the time. If you're not willing to potentially die to clone this man, why are you fucking him? Cause that's what y'all have at stake. I could I could run away <laughs> as a man. One of one of the things that my cousin told me a long time ago, and it stuck with me, and still to this day, um, what you were just saying about the baby thing. She always say, "Be careful who you lay down with," because it can be a chance that you're gonna be stuck with that person for the rest of your life, regardless if you're married to that person, you're dating that person, whatever the case may be. And that stayed in my mind. And my whole 32 years of life, I'm still sticking by that code. <laughs> it's, facts. it's facts. So, you know, I I be like, you know, it's fun. We're having fun. But would you be somebody I would want to share a kid with? Like, even if it was co-parenting or But see, and 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 I I take it a step further and I and I, I had an interview with a mom's group the other day. I don't think they like this at all, what I what I'm about to say. Okay. It's not only are you gonna be stuck with that person, you're gonna be stuck with their clone. Mm -hmm. So that child now reminds you. Not just that. Genetically speaking, because we talk about nature versus nurture and, and the whole nine, there's a very high likelihood he's going to be just like his dad. Right. That's what I mean. Just like, just <laughs> like you. Like. So do you admire this man enough to clone him? Right. See, that's, you know, and, and we have a lot of people that that's like that. You know, I had this this child and, you know, and baby was just like him and. At just like him. Never met his dad, but he just be just like him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's it. All right. We're going to yeah. keep cloning good dick. Let's it's the thing, like, I, <laughs> it's like, you know, you, as you get older and you, and you start thinking about stuff, you, you, those are questions that you, you ask, even, if, even if it comes down to like, um, family history and stuff, mm -hmm. like that stuff is important. You'll want to know, like, why my child is doing X, Y, and Z. Oh, because this is on your side of the family. You know, I don't even want to bring it. I can't say that because my mom will probably be watching this and she'll be pissed. About it. <laughs> but I say it's very important to know, like, regardless of if you're raised biologically by somebody, adopted, whatever, it's important to know all of that stuff. Sickle cell trait. Everything. Yep. Bipolar, you know, why, why, why do I have this? Like, you know, it's important to know. We keep prioritizing good dick. So I'm like, if I'm, if I'm, <laughs> if I'm with you and I'm trying to be with you, I'm going to be asking questions. So does this run in your family? So this, this happens in my family, you know, just so you know, it's not me being funny or whatever. It's, 
I'm thinking about the next generation. The, the natural question then becomes, why is it that a lot of our women wait until their clock is running out <laughs> for the ability to even have children to start prioritizing these important things and these important questions. Because again, like, and, and that's the thing I tell people, like, if I'm, if I ain't shit as a dude, I could be ain't shit for the next 20 years mm -hmm. and change my life at 49 years old and decide to pop out some kids. But that's the thing, you would be able to do that. You know, but women can't do that. Exactly. So I would think, I would hope the female delegation would be a little bit more protective of or younger women and be like, yo, you say, hey, mm. hey, <laughs> hey. So why is that not the case? Once again, it's the ideal. You know, I see stuff all the time. People be like, um, my child's going to be 15, 16 years old, 17 years old when I'm this age. Wow. Y'all people that's waiting gonna be whatever. I think sometimes it's like people have that idea of, I need to be at this certain stage by this certain time. And they rush. And when you rush, you don't take your time in doing what you're supposed to do. So you just picking anybody to do it with, if that makes sense. Having babies and stuff like that. You just pick anybody. It could be one of them things like, oh, it just happened, but me personally, I'm okay with being 40 years old, taking my child to kindergarten, 45. <laughs> that's, that's how I feel right now. Like I'm, I'm totally okay with that. If I have, like I said, if I, if I do decide to have a child married with my partner, whoever, if I'm 35, 36, I pray I'm healthy enough to do it, carry the baby. But like I said, if I choose not to do that, then I'm okay with that too. I just don't know. Like, I don't know. I don't know what the reason is. I don't know if it's, it could be one up on somebody. Oh, that's your baby daddy? Okay, he fed me my baby daddy. Oh, let me have another one. Let me one up on you. I, you know, I, we want better all the way around, you know. But it, it's a norm thing, really, now, it seems like. I don't know. Are women's standards too high? Because mm. the reason I asked that, going back to Kevin Samuels, um, one of the things he was saying and really critical about was that, you know, you would be married or you would have better outcomes if you weren't, if you didn't have your nose up mm -hmm. to good quality men because he wasn't tall enough or he didn't make six figures. So do you feel like women's standards are too high? Somewhat. Yeah. Um, going back to me and my best friend, like we have conversations all the time about, um, dating people that we're not used to dating. Like you're, I'm used to dating, not me, like just, just saying in general, you used to dating somebody that's six one, that's built, that drives a nice car, has a good job, you know, but where has they gotten you? Versus the man over here who's 5'8", five, 5'9", five, you know, he makes decent money, whatever. He don't have a 2022, but he got a 2017, but guess what? That thing paid off, sis, okay? You know, getting outside that norm, that's where that person is. Because then you're starting to see quality and traits in this person that you haven't quite tapped into because you're so worried about what this person got. Make sense? Okay. Like, damn, I ain't know I, I ain't know I had a thing for that. But because of this person done brought it out, you done missed it because she's so worried about this person. So, you know, I hope you're successful in your pursuit for Boaz. That might be a title too. Um, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I blame it on Eve. She went out of, she went out of Eve. Eve. But so, so, you know, you might have a son. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. You know, if you do have kids, describe in as much detail as you can the type of son that you want to raise. Um, a respectful son, loving. I want my baby to know he was made out of love. Not just you're here just because you're here. You, you were made out of love. Um, I want to raise a son who's not afraid to show his emotions. Tell me what's going on, what happened, who did it, you know. Um, I don't want him to be afraid of anything, anybody. Um, shit. It's crazy because more I think about it, I'm like, dang, I could really be raising a man with <laughs> Um, I just I wanna raise a son that's like he he will know the type of environment he grew up in, parents wise, um, that he's loved, that love is in the home, um, like I said, to be respectful, um, to be goal driven, um, to be aware of surroundings. Um, mm, I don't know. I can I can do that. I can put that in him. He has to take it in though. Why do you think you're clearer on the son you want to raise than the man you would be? Because I think I know that that will be something that's coming from me. I have a part in that too. You said versus the man that I would want to be. Probably because it's coming from me too. Like that's the man that I want to be like that's that would just be that. But the son that I would want to raise, I know that's some of my characteristics and traits that's, that's in that too. If that makes sense. It makes sense. And, you know, the reason I asked that particular question is because um, I'm curious to see if there is consistency between the hypothetical man you would be, mm-hmm. the men that you've been in fellowship with, mm-hmm. and the son that you'd raise. Mm-hmm. Because that should be the same guy. It should be. However, I I didn't raise the man that I would want, right? So it may be some stuff in there trickling along that I don't know anything about. I may not ever see it. It may not ever come out or it may come out at a time that I'm like, whoa. But my son, hopefully I would be able to be there for every little thing that happens that transpired. The man that you were asking me about, like, I don't know what that man has experienced in his past. There should be some foundationary principles, mm-hmm. you know. So even if he, he's experienced some stuff, there should still be, you know, he's uh, he's punctual. Mm-hmm. That's something you mentioned that's Ooh, important yes, to you. That'd, that'd make you, woof. <laughs> Sorry, why are you late? Like, you knew this yesterday we was going to be doing this. Like, yeah. Well, that's all I have for you. Really? That's it. That's it? That's it. I didn't get grilled that way yet. <laughs> mm. No, nah, it's not a grilling. That's not my ministry. I don't grill. 